Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time today. Uh, just like to uh, provide you with a bit of an overview on what's uh, happened in the last uh, 24 hours in regards to the flood situation that Queensland is currently experiencing. It's great sadness that uh, the uh, fisherman that was uh, lost at Bourne Island uh, was uh, recovered today. Um, and uh, again, it was a, a great tragedy. Just in, uh, we have information that a car was washed off a causeway at uh, Aramac, which is located basically between Emerald and Winton. And uh, the vehicle uh, has unfortunately been washed into waters, flood waters and one person has uh, actually lost their life. Again, a great tragedy, and I'd like to reinforce uh, with the community not to drive through uh, flooded roads or across flooded roads, but more importantly, uh, pay attention to road close signs. They are there for a purpose, and that purpose is the protection of life. As soon as we can open roads, we will, and we are working very closely with Department of Transport and Main Roads in that regard. Just to provide an overview at the moment, uh, the Rockhampton is uh, currently experiencing water levels around about the uh, 9 metre mark at the moment and uh, there has been a number of uh, disconnections for power in some of the low lying areas such as uh, Depot Hill where uh, the water inundation is expected. The evacuation centre is up and running, the numbers currently in the evacuation centre are low. Uh, however, the, the local government is, is anticipating uh, the numbers to rise in that particular area. The airport is uh, still uh, closed and uh, it will be closed for probably some time. Water is uh, still coming up onto the runway and there's about 700 metres of, uh, of actual uh, bitumen or, or runway still left. The disaster management operations are operating out of that uh, with their helicopters and uh, doing uh, local resupply. We are resupplying uh, into Rockhampton. We are working very closely with the Australian uh, Defence Force and the Retailers Association and uh, airlifts of, of uh, essential items are actually now being moved into Mackay and then uh, being trucked to the south down into Rockhampton. The uh, other uh, areas of uh, interest for us today is of course the uh, Vince Lester Bridge is uh, now uh, starting to reappear from the water. There is water. We were advised on the approaches to the uh, bridge. It is open for local traffic. Uh, that is local traffic that needs to make the crossing. is one lane. Uh, we do apologise for the inconvenience to the motorists. However, it is a necessity to ensure that the bridge is safe and uh, we will then uh, look at uh, further openings of that bridge later on. The... Um, Swinging back down and around the water is actually receding at Emerald, I should say, uh, and it is starting to return and uh, some of the uh, access routes are starting to open up now. Swinging further down towards uh, Surratt and uh, St George, we're looking very closely at those uh, two communities. They are very resilient communities, their planning is well advanced and they're looking at uh, possible uh, uh, water rises around about the March 2010 uh, heights. Uh, as has been reported, the, uh, a medical facility has been uh, uh, redeployed to St George from the Queensland Ambulance Service uh, as a precautionary me measure to assist the community down there. And uh, we are working very closely with all government agencies and also emergency services. Uh, of interest, uh, we are warning uh, people going back into their homes uh, to be very mindful of their, their safety and their health and to also uh, keep an eye out for wildlife as well that is in, in the area. In, the, um, in places such as Condamine, we are erring on the side of caution there. As the waters are receding, there is a, a fair degree of work that's got to be done in that area. We understand uh, people's needs to return to their, to their uh, community, and uh, we, uh, we do understand that. We uh, have been talking with the Disaster uh, District Coordinator and the D Disaster District Management Group in that area who are communicating with the community and also with, uh, with the local uh, government. And there are plans to, to start slowly looking at uh, what work needs to be done there before we actually uh, put people back into that environment. With uh, people that are actually in the recovery phase and are actually cleaning out their house, we're, we're saying please don't leave your valuables lying around outside. We do understand the need to obviously place uh, mats and uh, some other items over fences to help dry out. And what we're saying to people is this, that is not an invitation 
uh, to, uh, to scavenge through people's uh, property. People are putting that material out to dry and we would ask that people respect the people's uh, property uh, that is uh, drying. People have already suffered enough uh, trauma as it is without uh, being taken down that path. There have been 10 deaths associated with this uh, flooding event uh, since it started and of course with the recent one at Aramac is a great tragedy and I really want to urge people to be cautious around water. We're still having reports of people that jump into water to, uh, to, uh, to try and swim. The uh, Fitzroy River was reported uh, anecdotally at being at seven knots, which in essence is about 12 kilometres an hour, and it is extremely unsafe to do that and will end in tragedy. Um, and uh, it takes up uh, immense amounts of time for rescuers and resources into a dangerous environment and we would ask people not to do that. The other thing we're asking people not to do is drive around uh, flooded roads uh, through communities. They are creating a bow waves and those bow waves do enter people's property. So there might be a small margin between being having water under the house to having water through your house. If people drive along a road and create a, a wash and a small wave, that is the difference between having no damage inside your house to having damage in your house. And we are saying to people, please don't do that. Okay? It's, uh, it's a very simple message. Respect your community, respect your neighbours, and uh, give them the space that they need to actually recover from this disaster. I will now pass to Warren Britson from Emergency Management Queensland, who has a couple of points that he would like to uh, raise. Thank, Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Alistair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Warren Britson. I'm currently the Assistant Director General for Emergency Management Queensland. A couple of points I'd like to bring to your attention today and ask for your transference of the information out into the community, and that is people who are thinking about cleaning up their homes or returning to their homes, they should contact their insurance provider to get the actual facts about what they can and can't do. We've been told that there's a lot of rumour and innuendo out there in the community and some of that is not factual at all. The Australian Insurance Council has issued a fact sheet, they call it a fact sheet, and we're encouraging people to access that and read it. And also listen to your media uh, where the correct advice can be given about matters. To give you an example, some people are hearing that they can't do anything with their house until the insurance assessor arrives, and that may not be correct after you contact your insurance provider. The other issue is um, we are currently looking at fatigue management for our state emergency service volunteers. They've been working extremely hard now since before Christmas and tomorrow is a work day when most people go back to work after an extended holiday period. Some of our state emergency service volunteers do have to return to work tomorrow. So we're looking at fatigue management and also replacement of persons who we may lose now as they go back to their place of work. Part of that is we're discussing with South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales who've offered their support. So we have a planning process happening now with those three state SES people who want to give us assistance. Right now today, five personnel from Victoria, Vic SES, have arrived here and they're currently working in this building. They are what they term flood experts and they're here giving us assistance. Um, thank you, that's all I need to announce. Well, I'll open it up for questions. I'm sure there'll be some. Can you arrest uh, for looting? Sorry? Have you made any arrests for looting? Uh, in regards to that, the, um, there has been a media release this morning in uh, Rockhampton uh, about what I understand to be uh, non-flood related uh, matters and I'd probably uh, ask if you could, uh, could refer you to that because I don't have the finer details on that one. That Aramac uh, did, did provide us detail about what actually happened? Um, I'd probably be able to do that later. It was just had just come in uh, before I walked into the room. So, um, yeah, I do apologise for not so having... Was it around lunchtime today? I'm not sure of the timing. We just we just got told before we walked through the door, so I thought I'd share that with you. So just one person in the car, or you don't know that? I think there was two. I think that uh, one person uh, unfortunately lost their life and one has survived. When did that happen? I'm not sure at the timings of that. I will need to get that for you. Can you speak generally about looting? Um, well, all I can say is at the moment I haven't had any uh, advice provided to me about uh, flood-related stealing. Um, but what we're saying to people is that to take care of their property, 
uh, to be mindful about not putting valuables uh, out to dry and that to obviously uh, keep an eye on that. There are unfortunately some people around that will uh, think that this is a good opportunity to take advantage and what we're saying to people is uh, to, to uh, be uh, security conscious about your valuables as you would do any other time. We have moved additional police into uh, quite a number of communities, such as we've moved additional police into Rockhampton, we've moved additional police into uh, Emerald, we moved additional police into St George and Surratt, and we also moved additional police into Alpha and Jericho. So where communities are being affected, we are actually moving additional resources into there to provide uh, enhanced policing coverage. And we've had police in Theodore and Condamine as well the whole time. Warren, if I could just ask you, any ideas when the South Australian or New South Wales people might be up here or what? Uh, I can't give you a definitive of answer. Uh, no, we don't think the next couple of days. We've got a lot of state emergency service volunteers in Queensland as well who we can use. So we're looking long term. This event will be long term for our SES volunteers. And because we are in the beginning of the wet season, we do expect further rain, further events. So those, that assistance will be long term. Certainly not in the next couple of days. So we've got other people on standby that can take over from the ones that are... That's so right. People in those states have offered and we've taken their offer up and just asked them to be on standby. Okay. Just about food. Um, are there any food shortages in any communities at all? I haven't been made aware of any. Um, what I have been advised, though, today is that the local disaster management groups are keeping up with the resupply of smaller communities. Uh, the larger communities... Um, uh, such as uh, Rockhampton uh, and beyond. Those plans are well advanced, again, talking with the Retailers Association, but also with uh, the Australian Defence Force, who have uh, started their uh, airlift today, um, going uh, basically amberly to, um, to uh, Mackay. But uh, there are plans well in advance in regards to uh, quite a wide range of uh, challenges that we face. And as each of those challenges are brought forward, we're actually putting in place those plans to address those. We are trying to do that in a very timely manner, to be in front of uh, the timelines. And to date, uh, what I have been advised is that uh, that is the case. So no food shortages at this stage? To the best of my knowledge, uh, no. Um, but what we are, we are proactively asking uh, out through the disaster management networks for any, uh, any needs for resupply to be brought forward. But just on that, we're also um, pre-positioning a lot of cleaning uh, fluids and uh, cleaning equipment to assist people uh, in their endeavours to clean up. And I know Emerald has a uh, central store, which is uh, through their local disaster management group, and a lot of the considerations, not just around essential food items, but also cleaning and also medical supplies, which we are moving uh, on a regular basis. Do you know what sort of stuff that the uh, ADF are taking from Andrews today? Or um, no, I don't, unfortunately. Uh, I think that's been arranged uh, uh, between the Retailers Association and the Resupply Committee. Okay. Oh, can you? Oh, yeah, okay, there I can go. give you a rough idea. Yeah. The negotiations with the Australian Retailers Association was that the ADF would uplift what we call essential items yeah. without going through a great list. It's generally exactly that, the essential items. And they can be, of course, baby supplies. And I know, for instance, there's a pallet of nappies on board. So it's what's considered essential for the community in Rockhampton. Mm -hmm. And today's not the only... That'll be ongoing. There's more of those planned? No, the, the plan is to do the uplift today, and we hope by tomorrow, or at least the Australian Retailers Association, hope that by tomorrow some other links will be available. Do you know how long Rockhampton may be cut off? Um, we think that Rockhampton could be isolated probably for um, anywhere uh, around about a week or so. But as other road routes are opening up um, to the west, uh, so we can actually utilise those road routes as well to, to resupply. Police are working very closely with uh, DTMR in that particular space, and I should clarify that's Department of Transport and Main Roads, and uh, to reopen road systems as soon as possible. But again, the priority needs to be around uh, the resupply of communities. That That is a primacy uh, for our, um, our objective in, uh, in this operation. And what about the Rockhampton Airport? <coughs> any, any idea how long that might be? Well, the Rockhampton Airport uh, will be closed whilst there is uh, water across the, uh, the uh, runway. 
uh, then obviously once the water recedes there will have to be ongoing engineering uh, assessments of the runway to make sure it is safe. To give you a definitive date is very, very difficult because uh, it's a great unknown. But I would assure uh, people that uh, we don't intend to have things closed for any longer than is absolutely necessary. We understand the importance of these routes and these uh, facilities and we understand that the hardship that it does cause and we are very mindful of that. And just again, why, why go to Mackay with this, with this airlift rather than to the airport? I know because helicopters can still be the helicopters can get in there, but the amount of goods uh, and the weight and the size of what we're taking, um, we can't land fixed-wing aircraft uh, in Rockhampton. So the closest place to land uh, and to repackage and send down is, is obviously Mackay, uh, and that plan at the moment is considered to be the, the best plan that we're using. Obviously, we revisit our plans on a regular basis. We look at uh, what other options are available and how we can do things uh, better and uh, we're continually looking at that including the road networks and looking at alternatives uh, in that regard. And once it goes to Mackay it gets trucked down doesn't it? Yes it does, it gets trucked down into, uh, into Rockhampton. The roads to the north of Rockhampton, the highway is still open at this time, however the road and the rail uh, to the south is closed at this time due to the flood waters. What is the weight I can't answer that one, unfortunately. Do you give any estimate at all for how much stuff has gone? Um, all I can say is it goes in on pallets, on aviation-style pallets, and uh, I would 15. anticipate that they would be pretty well. 15. 15, 15, 15 pallets. 15 pallets? Yeah. Um, do you have any idea when you said it was a slow process? We going methodically with condomine? Do you know when people might be able to return home? I don't at this time. And when I say a slow process, I, I don't mean slow as in pace of slowness, but it's a case of, of being careful and mindful of uh, things such as power, uh, sewage, um, and also uh, uh, what's been washed down and washed through and washed out of uh, Condomine itself. So we need to do reconnaissance in, into the town uh, and then we need to work with people to go back there. But that is a local plan that's been put together at the local level in Dolby in consultation with the community there and uh, we will be moving as fast as we possibly can uh, to re-establish uh, the people into Condamine as we do with all communities. I guess Theodore and Emerald, what's, what's happening in those two places? Um, well, Theodore, at the moment, um, the Disaster District uh, has sent representatives to Theodore today. Uh, they are meeting on the ground there with the local disaster management group. They're looking for their first opportunities in the receding floodwaters as to start their work. And again, it's about uh, making sure that they can identify what utilities can be switched on. It's important to have uh, homes and businesses inspected electrically to make sure when the power is reconnected that everybody is safe, that is not only emergency service workers but also uh, the people that are returning to their homes and uh, we'll also be uh, working in the space of providing um, cleaning uh, fluids and equipment into that area to, to assist people. Emerald, the clean-up is uh, well underway, as you've heard the estimation of inundation of houses has been revised uh, the number of houses that have had water in and around the yard still stands in the thousands. People are slowly returning back to their homes. It's a long journey for these people and it's a heartbreaking journey. They've, uh, they've experienced losses and uh, tragedies that uh, most of us can't relate to. Uh, but this event has affected over 200,000 uh, people of our, of our community across a vast area and it, it will be a very long process, but it is a process that communities are, are forging ahead with and they're at the moment doing a sterling job. And we would like to thank the volunteers, the Red Cross, uh, and other non-government and government organisations that are working very closely together to restore these communities. Has the government given you a reassurance of whatever resources you need that, um, that they're forthcoming? Part of what we do is about uh, harnessing the resources that are available uh, across the, the state and making sure that all resources and efforts are directed to those uh, organisations, or sorry, to those communities in need, and that is part of uh, what we do on a day-by-day -day basis. The pallets of goods are all 
donated by the association, or the association has collected these items? Uh, I, I can't answer that. All I know is that the pallets of goods that are going up there is, uh, is uh, something that's been, uh, been arranged for resupply between the Retailers Association and obviously the resupply committee here, which involves uh, members of the Australian Defence Force. So that's going up today or has left already? They have left. Uh, it'll be uh, an ongoing thing at the moment until such time as other resupply routes open up. And as they open up, so we will start to uh, look at alternative methods of providing resupply to our major towns and cities. So there'll be more than just one chopper going? Uh, no, they're fixed-wing aircraft. Oh, so okay. that, yep. yeah. so um, we're flying into Mackay, and I believe they are C-130s? C-133 flights. By three flights, so there are opportunities there, uh, both in Mackay and at Amberley. Right. Three flights today, or and, and what, how long does it take to get up there? Um, I have no idea. Sorry. And that'll be ongoing tomorrow. We don't. Know. Uh, at the moment, I think, is it planned for tomorrow? Planned for tomorrow. No, it's just planned for today at the moment. But one of the dangers, of course, in resupply is oversupply. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very mindful that we don't pump so much uh, resources in there and kill people with kindness as well. So we were talking with uh, people on the ground up there. Uh, the local, uh, obviously the local uh, store operators are talking with their suppliers and we're talking with the local police and what we're trying to do is make sure that uh, we don't uplift more than is what they actually need. So, yeah. So you said essential items and you mentioned nappies, but we're talking food, clothing... Essentials for maintaining life, yeah. Uh, so uh, things that you would need on a day-by-day -day basis to maintain life. Yeah. And that's all free, is it, to the people? Like it's not like it's going to Coles or Woolworths. No, it goes, it life. goes, it goes into, uh, it goes into, uh, into stores for sale, uh, as as it would normally do. I believe that's yeah, the, uh, that's the arrangement there. So it's about what it's about is about maintaining the functionality of the town. So Coles and Woolworths mainly? Um, I'm not sure which stores they are, but they, they are about maintaining the functionality. So if you go to a shop, then you should be able to buy uh, bread and milk, those sorts of things, and nappies. And, yeah. and you did this because these stores were wiped and their shelves were empty? No, some of the, some of the stores, uh, there was a rush on buying and uh, there was a need to provide that resupply. And in cases such as Emerald, um, those stores are are currently being planned for resupply. They're cleaning them out now, and those stores will be resupplied. Uh, uh, we're thinking probably today. So, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Are the emerald emerald separate to Rockhampton? Yeah, they're, emeralds. They're not getting the stuff from the No, at the moment, uh, what's happening in Emerald is uh, the road routes are opened up. So a lot of the resupplying for Emerald is being organised at the local <coughs> level. And so what they're saying locally is that we've got a handle on this, we can manage this. Um, what they lift up is what they need from the state. So uh, our job is then to provide that support where they can't get a local district. Thank you very much.